Uh, thank you, everyone, for coming. Uh, as always, this is our Open WRT uh, weekly meeting, or pur I'm sorry, Purple WRT week weekly meeting. Um, uh, it, as always, the meetings are recorded. We post them on YouTube, so people who aren't here can can uh, watch them and uh, kind of c catch up with what's going on. Um, oh, our agenda, as uh, as is here, um, I think since we should do introductions, since we have a new member, uh, if uh, 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 Mikhail, you can uh, you can go first since you are the new member. Okay, thanks, Eric. Mm -hmm. So, hi, everybody. My name is Michal Hrushetsky. I'm from Prague. I'm currently working for CZNIC. Maybe you heard about uh, the company. We are, uh, we have an old router called Tourist, and we are now working on a new one called Tourist Omnia. They are both uh, OpenWRT, and uh, they are pretty beefy. And one crazy thing that we do is we are migrating between OpenWRT versions without uh, refreshing older router. Really? Yeah. Wow. How, how is this that going? Just curious. Well, every time we are switching from uh, to new Maya version, there's plenty of rough edges to smooth out. <laughs> okay. But awesome. yeah, it's working so far. Awesome. Well, but thank you, Mikhail, for uh, joining, and we're happy to have you um, uh, involved. I should also mention that Mikhail is, is by far the largest contributor um, outside of QCA for Board Farm, so uh, uh, he has sent in quite a few pull requests. Um, in the last month or so, so we very much appreciate it. Probably should uh, have introductions from everyone else too, since this is uh, since Mikhail is new. Um, Paul, would you like to go ahead? Hello. So uh, yeah, I'm. Uh, I work for Imagination Technologies, Assurance Manager. So obviously, we we have a project called Creator, where the the, the hub uses OpenWRT, and uh, we, I'm obviously in charge of making sure that we assure what we do, and so Board Farm's interesting to me for that reason. That's pretty much it. Awesome. Jose? Right, I'm Jose Imagination, working quite closely with Paul. I'm in the, in the embedded development team. At the moment, I'm more uh, involved in a project that is actually not using OpenWRT yet, but I'm also a a bit involved in the creator project that Paul Blake has just mentioned. Thanks. Thank you, Jose. Uh, Hauke? Yeah, hi, I'm Hauke from, I'm working for Intel, and I perform my Atlantic part, and I'm also active in the uh, upstream WRT project. Awesome. Well, thank you. I hope that uh, that gives Mikhail a kind of sense of, of who's in this group. Um, uh, board farm status, uh, our general agenda. Uh, I I make made some more progress um, on our board farm, uh, Mikhail. For in case you are not are familiar, um, I'm working on trying to make uh, a version of board farm that is accessible from the internet, so people could theoretically, um, who are trusted members of the OpenWRT community, could could basically connect to a board farm submit their um, new builds and the, do some tests to kind of see, you know, if the if a new build of OpenWRT, you know, breaks anything on a, on a router that they may not have in their possession. Um, so I've been working okay. that, yeah, I've been working on that um, for about the last uh, month or so. Uh, made some more progress this week. Um, the big, the big part of the LAN and WAN uh, as non-root is, is getting better. I've moved more of uh, the, I previously had a number of calls that had to be done as root. Um, I've kind of cut down those, th those set of calls. Um, the same stuff happens, but it's wrapped a little bit differently. So there are fewer um, things that have to be run as sudo. 
through sudo. So that makes it a little bit, um, probably a little bit safer. Uh, so uh, I never really shared this before, but my working space is um, on screen, uh, is my, that the, the URL for that. And the branch is just local working. I don't know how I came up with that. It's not exactly a, uh, the commit messages are not what I would submit eventually, but it's kind of, can you can keep track of what I've kind of the things that I've done if you're if you're curious, um, and then eventually once I get that in a little bit better state, I'll I'll submit it to the to the upstream project. Um, uh, Paul, or do you have any uh, any update from your end? Yeah, uh, so <clears throat> I've actually I've changed the engineer working on this. It just uh, wasn't a, uh, the original engineer was too getting sidetracked too often <laughs> to yeah. uh, really progress. Um, but he is he they're actually kind of working together actually on this a bit now. Awesome. So what we've got here is um, in in the UK office uh, one guy who's working on trying to get actually CI forty uh, connected up. Uh, so he's got his WAN and LAN devices seems to be everything seems to be working up to the point where we use the tool to SSH in to those devices. And some reason he can do that manually, but he can't get the the board farm to do it using the tool. Um, okay. So I don't know if you happen to know off the top of your head why that might be. He's going to have a little look before he raises any questions. But uh, that's the latest status I got today. Okay. Uh, so I think we're close. Um, awesome. Step after that, we'll just be trying to run some tests and see how it goes. Yeah, definitely. I think um, I, I. I mean, Mikhail also had some has had some experience. I think with this. Um, in my case, I had to add. Um, there was there was no way to uh, submit a different WAN or LAN username and password. Um, right. Uh, I had I added support. I don't think I've submitted that support. It's in my branch. Um, okay. It, there is a way to do it though. It, I I I had added a way. I don't think I've submitted that support yet. Because um, I did submit some things and then I um, then I, I got to the point where I was I was spending more time submitting things and not <laughs> like making much progress. So it was like I need to just make some progress and then submit more later. Um, okay. So I guess the question from my side then is, is it worth waiting for that submit and carrying on afterwards? Or should we battle this out ourselves? Or what do you um, suggest? You know what I can do is for the LAN and the WAN uh, username and password, that is pretty straightforward. I can I can work on that this afternoon and submit it. Um, Perfect. Take it out of my branch and submit it. Um, that, would, that would be awesome. Great. Definitely. Uh, the... There's what was I was going to think of something else. Um, Mikhail had also added support for um, connecting using a key instead of the password and username. Um, obviously, you'd okay. still need the username, but not the password. Um, I, I haven't tested that too much yet, but I mean, Mikhail, do you have? I mean, how's that working for you? Well, it's working fine. Uh, I'm able to connect to my WAN and LAN, so. Okay. Yeah, apart from that, uh, one tricky part that might help is that I found out that uh, there is uh, plenty, of, plenty of hard-coded IP addresses, but it's uh, for the internal communication. Yes. So there are... it shouldn't affect uh, when and LAN, and yeah, no idea what could be missing out. Yeah, we did yeah. notice those um, kind of fingers crossed. Hope to, hopefully they will just be, uh, it's okay that they're uh, hard coded and we'll see. Yeah, I, I for for those, I actually um, kind of, I, I kind of cheated to get around having to set those. I just simply, I think most of them are like 192.168 in, in that address range. Yeah. I, for our, our local network, we just simply didn't we change it to a a, a ten dot zero dot whatever uh, mm -hmm. address for our main local network just so there wouldn't be any conflict? I don't honestly know what happens if I would think there would be problems <laughs> if they were both on one ninety two dot one six eight, but um, just to avoid that one. Um, 
that that would be another thing though to add to the configuration um either you know you guys could do that or 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 some or someone else to to uh add support for changing that stuff uh, those configurations because um yeah it's bound to have a problem at some point somebody's going to have it um yeah so. yeah well it, you know if we you, I, it's, find any problems or think of a good way to do it i'll see will okay awesome all. all right yeah i'll send over that 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 win and lan uh, I'll, I'll submit that patch uh today <clears throat> thanks no, no problem um another thing that that i i mean i we don't have the people at qca here to talk about this but uh I'm wondering, Mikkel, you've submitted so many pull requests. Uh, would you be interested in getting commit access so you could merge your own pull requests or merge other people's pull requests on the QCA repository? Maybe. Uh, yeah, I can. Uh, if you give me some uh, policies and guidelines, uh, what can I merge and what should I not merge, then I'm okay. fine with that. Awesome. Yeah, I we, we I'd be happy to do that. We um right now there aren't a ton of guidelines to the QCA folks have kind of they they added me as a there just to save them time and they're um pretty open to anything. So uh my I've kind of had to learn their guidelines, but I think we can come up with some some clearer ones uh going forward. But um yeah, I'll talk to them and I'll add you into the the email and because they're they yeah they don't mind they're they don't have time to to handle all the pull requests uh from you know you and myself so it, it's it's kind of an issue of and they have an internal fork anyway they i mean so it's not a huge issue either way but they're good resources um okay so well awesome that's great um Anything else about board farm? I know Hauke, you had you had talked about doing that. At, you were working on it at one point, playing with it. Yeah, but I haven't uh, really done it in the last few weeks. Okay. So, yeah, nothing new. Okay, awesome. Well, if, if you do, we'd um, you know, don't hesitate to talk to us about it. We'd love to hear about it. Uh, anything mm -hmm. else about board farm? folks maybe i will have some little comment i uh, saw uh before this meeting i watched the video from the last meeting mm -hmm. i think you were asking for feedback regarding the local port support so last few days i switched and everything works nice and well uh, and... oh yeah okay i know what you're talking about okay yeah the, the local serial port local serial port yeah okay and, awesome. Uh, just a little bit of uh, introduction to what uh, I set up at uh, at my work. Okay. Uh, because of all these hard coded addresses, I basically virtualized all the setup. So I have just one PC and uh, two routers. One is just making a bunch of VLANs, and all the networks are virtual and uh, separated from our lab network so I can set up any IP addresses that I want and it doesn't interfere with anything else. Okay. Um, it, it, is that something you'd be willing to document? Um, kind of how you did that? Yeah. Um, awesome. That, that, yeah, that'd be great because I think the more examples we have of how people are using this, it's going to get a little clearer how do we actually kind of educate people on how to do this. Um, you know, in my case, we're using actual hardware. Um, so I know that internally to QCA, they use a lot of, they use VMs for the WAN, the LAN. So um, kind, you know, kind of sounds like what you're doing. Um, so the more documentation we have of this, it would be awesome. So thank you very much. That's great. Okay, I will write something and send a pull request to repository to some doc uh, directory. Awesome. That'd be great. Okay. Awesome. Um, all right. Anything else on, on board farm that anyone wants to talk about? This might be a little uh, early days, 
but mm -hmm. uh, I guess I guess in the end, what you're aiming for, right, Eric, is to have <clears throat> a a set of hardware on your board farm mm -hmm. uh, to run that uh, people can run tests on or will be run run tests on. Um, and is that at what point should I start uh, asking about? Well, when can we put one of our devices on there? <laughs> is that a long way away or? Um, I don't think it's a long way away. I would say it's probably a month or two. Um, oh, probably great. in that area. Um, I have like three. Uh, the big thing that that it is, is is the is the cost of the other devices. Um, that we've had to set up because we right. if because you know i've got like three raspberry pis per router so i mean that right. right there you're adding you know like realistically yeah, about 150 yeah. bucks <laughs> um, i have no problem with that but i have to get approval for that um it, it i i don't i but i think you know obviously um you know quite honestly obviously imagination's a big sponsor of of purple i think that's that's probably something we could we could work out uh in the near future i have um i think i have six boards from qca but they're only they're two of three different boards so it's you know i realistically only have three boards but i have some extras <clears throat> um what we can do is i think uh we can we can figure out the process of how do we actually get stuff added um, yeah yeah Okay. But but I, I do I very much want you know the the creator boards and and everything we we can to make that accessible to people, um, okay. and then obviously so, you're going to be using them internally as well. So yeah. Yeah yeah yeah. Well, I think there's steps before this. I was just wondering what sort of timescales we're talking about. So obviously we want to try and get it running here. We've been yes. talking a bit about how do we because the CI40 only has one Ethernet port. It's not really an access point in the same way as okay. a, a home access point might be. So at the mm -hmm. moment, we're sort of thinking, well, we've got two options. We can plug that Ethernet port into the WAN and then use a USB to Ethernet for LAN or something, or even the wireless to LAN um, for our own well, setup. Yeah. there. Well, technically, you don't have to have a WAN and a LAN. Right. Um, you, you can choose to just use the LAN. It does technically work. I, obviously, there are some some features that you can't, and I haven't looked at what those all are. But there are mm -hmm. some features that you can't that the tests that just don't run because there isn't a WAN. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I figured that might be the case, but I'm trying to think of how people would actually use it. And I, I know when we raised our Kickstarter, there are a lot of mm -hmm. people saying, well, they would like to use it as their home router as well. So that mm -hmm. wouldn't imply that you know. They would have a WAN on the Ethernet port and LAN as a wireless. Uh, sorry, yeah, LAN as a wireless. Um, yeah. But then that throws up the question of, you know, what wireless is is not as reliable as an Ethernet, and would that throw up any issues? I haven't looked through all the test cases yet, but uh, it doesn't look like it from what I can see. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. There is support I know for, for testing uh, the wireless stuff in there. Um, okay. It, it is in there, but I've literally not tested it. From um, for our board farm as a policy, we're not testing wireless for for <clears throat> regulatory purposes because obviously people can submit their own. They're trusted, but they can still submit their own. Uh, mm. They can flash a router, and at that point, it's kind of like, well, we're responsible. Yeah. Okay. For it. Um, Fair enough. It, but that. That said, if I have a, if we have a good solution to actually, um, if somebody has a good way to make a Faraday cage that's large, I, I'm more than willing to to add those tests and and mm -hmm. and make it easier to do that. It's just we don't have that right now. Sure, sure. Um, okay, so that's fine. If if anybody knows how to do that, or you know how to uh, how to uh, make sure that 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 those uh, that rate uh, the transmissions don't get out. I'm I'd love to hear about it because mm. I, I I'm not exactly. I'm not it, 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 I I've tried. It's very hard. Yes, <laughs> it's a bit easier with five gigahertz, but not with two point four. You you can you can have like um we use a coax cable system, so you actually kind of link the aerials up to coax cables and mm -hmm. have the wireless go over them instead. You just can't stop 
the the RF getting out as well. They kind of act a little bit, even when they're shielded, act a little bit like aerials. So, and we've okay. tried sticking them in in tin boxes and stuff, but it's uh, there are expensive solutions out there, of course, but we just don't want to spend that much money on it <laughs> yeah that's the same with us I, if you if you do have suggestions though um like even even that coax stuff i don't know like i mean i'm not a i'm not a physicist i'm not an engineer i'm a developer i don't know that stuff as well as um you know probably you do so if you have suggestions i mean it's probably possible other people are have who are going to use it or have used it have thought of well how do we actually do this testing um in the best way possible um, so any documentation or information you have, it'd be great. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, as I say, I, there, there are things we can do, things we can't do, but, uh, at the moment I have no, yeah, I don't really have a solution for, mm -hmm. you know, a, a low cost Faraday cage. Um, yeah. but I, I am looking for one. So if I ever find one, I'll, I'll let you know. Please do. That's yeah. The best I've, the best I came up with in this completely eliminates wireless testing is just removing the antennas that's the best i've come up with and, right right and that's what i'm doing for the routers that i'm getting from qca um is that a 100 percent good solution no but it's it, if it's going to transmit it's probably not going to go very far at the very least right right well maybe um, wireless coax would do that then I anyway yeah for me just this line of sight are still working so i have also set up i was too lazy to add the antennas to the board um, and yeah some meters are working so i have some meters range so the desk is covered with uh, wi-fi now and <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe that's something we can look at going forward is to see the feasibility um, of that <clears throat> there are also some boxes professional boxes uh which are shielded but i don't know how expensive they are and how where you get it probably hard to get and expensive <clears throat> I've I did a brief search and again I was kind of unqualified to even know what was correct but when I did do a search it was like these are really expensive boxes and they're and they're not that big to start off with so it became like well yeah this is going to be thousands of dollars for um you know testing $200 worth of hardware it, it is what it kind of came into that that kind of range maybe Paul's you know, you can, you have better experience, but. Well, it, it's only, it came out of our, we, we were trying to test um, mesh networking solutions. Mm -hmm. And obviously what we, what we wanted to do was control the attenuation between two devices. And so okay. we, we wanted to make sure that there was no leakage of, you know, RF between the mm -hmm. devices. Now we were doing this testing in one room, uh, so I didn't actually check whether we were, well, by connecting the aerials um, of the RF to each other with, with cables, I didn't actually check whether that then diminishes the range by enough um, mm -hmm. so that you wouldn't be able to, you know, log onto it outside the, the, the building or something. Mm -hmm. But we could, we could try that and see what happens. If you could, I mean, that'd be awesome. It'd be really helpful for, um, you know, for from our end trying to understand what the best way to if there's a good way to do this and um if yeah you know, what well i think with with we like um uh, with some you know in the, some routers that are for sale you can buy from mm -hmm. amazon or whatever they'll have the sma connector that the aerial screws into right and you can yep. you can pretty much just put an attenuator on that uh, and maybe that would solve the problem. We have the we have the equipment, so I, I can give it a go. I'll let you know next week. Awesome. Well, thanks. I really appreciate that. No worries. Thanks. All right. All right. Well, I, we probably should get get moving to the other other parts of the agenda. It probably won't take too long, but um. Uh, funding open WRT projects. Um, the uh, purple software support program feedback. Um, Hauke has probably seen a bit of this. Um, and I kind of would wish to, that Kathy had been here because she was also involved in it. The response was, I would say mixed is a good way to describe it. Um, there are a number of uh, members of the community 
of OpenWRT community who were really concerned and felt that this was um, uh, not necessarily on the, uh, I don't know how to describe it, um, how to be polite about it. Uh, that they were, it wasn't in the best interest of OpenWRT. Hauke, is that a good description, do you think? Yes, there are some, some, it's not really known how, what, how, uh, what, what purple and actually directly wants in the end. Uh, so because uh, purple, I think, exists for three years now and mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> Since the beginning, you have uh, you want to support OpenWRT, and yeah, you did the, the summit last year. But besides from that, there isn't much. There haven't much happened mm -hmm. in the last three years. And mm, yes, that that's the problem a little bit. Uh, okay, that's fair. So at um, least there's, there's a meeting this um, this art. At least we plan to do it next week sometime. Okay. I don't know All if right. you're involved in this. I first I heard of it, so okay. yeah. I mean, awesome. Um, I I yeah. So I think that's probably a probably a good thing. Um, so uh, yeah. So I I think that that the next steps going forward, I think we'll uh, we'll have to kind of figure out where that's going. Um, but, uh, I probably have to talk to Kathy and Art a little more on the, on, on this and kind of see where, where next steps are and, and how we can support the, the community more. So, all right. Yeah, um, I mean, that's, um, one of the points we wanted to do, talk, uh, with, with Art. I don't know if it's good to start here now. Uh, I think it's, <clears throat> um, yeah, yeah. How, how, yeah. How we think this could work out better. Um, yeah. Okay. Sounds good. All right. Um, the uh, regulatory update. Uh, not much going on in that that respect. Um, so uh, nothing really there. Uh, Open WRT summit. Uh, there haven't really done anything. Um, I'm kind of waiting for us to get past the, the to deal with um, kind of the the better relationship um, with the and handle the uh, purple uh, software support program and not you know jump throw a bunch of things out there at once because I think that would be too confusing and uh, and um, and whatnot. So that. That is, uh, that's all I have. Um, does any other, um, any other topics? Not from me. All right. All right, well, we can, uh, we can uh, close the meeting then. Uh, thank you everyone for coming. Um, and uh, we can, uh, we can, um, and uh, we will see everyone next week. Cheers, Eric. Thanks. See ya. Bye. 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 Bye.